Thank you for joining today's webinar featuring leading general contractor Robbins & Morton. Today's session will cover how Robbins & Morton introduced BIM to their subcontractors and the benefits realized. During this presentation, all lines will remain muted to preserve the quality of the recording. All questions will be addressed at the end of the webinar. If you have a question at any time, please use the question panel on the right side and our team will answer them shortly. We will also have a recorded version of this web presentation ready to share tomorrow. Now let's get started. It is my pleasure to introduce you to our host, Assemble Systems Product Manager, Tim Kelly, and iSquareFoot Product Manager, Tom Schweitzer. Go ahead, Tim. Thanks, Samira. And as Samira mentioned, I'm Product Manager here at Assemble. And ultimately, I, I come actually out of the construction industry. I work for a general contractor for um, uh, up until I joined Assemble, and um, prior to that, I um, uh, graduated from Texas A&M uh, in the construction program and uh, had a great opportunity of working with a lot of individuals uh, across the industry that come out of that program. Um, and with me today is Tom Schweitzer, and I'll let Tom go ahead and introduce himself. Thanks, Tim. Um, my name is Tom Schweitzer. I'm the product manager here at I Square Foot, working closely with our general contractors. I've been here uh, working at I Square Foot uh, closely with our general contractors and uh, subcontractors for about 10 years. Um, we're really excited about what we've been doing here with Assemble Systems uh, as an integration, and it's you know our pleasure to introduce. Uh, Blake and Raul from uh, Robbins and Morton uh, to talk about their experience today. Raul, tell us about yourself. Appreciate it. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to, to speak to everyone as well. Um, I have 25 years experience in the industry, uh, probably half in the design side and half in the construction side. Been an early adapter of Revit back in 2000 and uh, right. love to see this type of conversation here uh, in seeing where it's come and how far it's come the past 16 years. Uh, my goal here is to strategically implement uh, technology to help our processes and help our teams uh, become better at what we do with the building information and using it uh, for construction. Uh, so that's really our goal and our strategy as a company to really integrate technology that's going to help us uh, down the road. And I'm glad, uh, uh, obviously, Blake here with us, uh, really the the lead to this presentation. So Blake, I'll turn over to you. Absolutely. Thanks, Raul. My name is Blake Thayers. I'm a graduate of Auburn University, and I'm currently a part of our pre-construction team here in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, I have been using uh, BIM technologies, particularly Assemble, for the past few years in my pre-construction efforts. And the more that I've used it, um, it's become an integral part to what I do here each and every day. I'm really excited about this. Uh, this new plug-in and the ability that we have to share this this data and this information uh, to help contractors through our square foot. So enjoy the webinar. Yeah, thanks for the introduction, guys. So before we get started today, um, what we'd like to do, just to get an uh, understanding of where everyone stands, uh, we'd like to get this poll question in front of you guys, and, and I'll let you take a, just a minute to answer it. But how often does your company utilize them? Uh, anywhere from on every single project to we don't use it at all, uh, feel free to answer any, uh, any of those there. All right, and I'm just going to give a few more seconds. And <clears throat> that, that looks good. I'll just say um, from the feedback, it looks like um, uh, anywhere from when, specifically when there's a need on to um, quite a few responded with on every project. Um, so before, again, before we get started as we move into the agenda here, I just want to do a high-level um, overview of what today is about, and then we'll get into it. Um, so first, we're going to do an introduction, um, just for those of you who are unaware. Uh, we've got a symbol here today, I Square Foot and Robinson Morton. We'll introduce each of those companies. Um, and then we're going to get into talking about sharing BIM views and, and information from models with bidders in that process. Uh, so we'll talk about integrating um, and how Robbins and Morton work with their subcontractors there. Um, we'll talk about the benefits that um, both uh, Robbins and Morton as a general contractor and their subcon and ultimately their owner were able to receive out of this process. Uh, we'll look at the learning curve for a minute, and, and I believe Blake has some good insight on, on what they walked through on that. And then lastly, we'll talk about how this is uh, ultimately changing the industry. 
So to start, um, I'll, I'll kind of quickly mention for those that aren't familiar with the symbol, um, a symbol is a model-based data management solution uh, for accessing and organizing BIM data uh, from within a web environment. Uh, so we're completely cloud-based, and ultimately that means that um, whether you want to quickly jump into a model or go browse and, and consume uh, data to enhance your workflows, um, there's no need for any uh, download of heavy software. Ultimately, it's a login to our system. Uh, models are published into our system, and so uh, when it's there, your users can get in and quickly utilize the, the model data and the model views that are there. Uh, specifically with our integration with Iceberg Foot, the idea is to start to get uh, this information in front of your bidders that you're working with, um, whether that be on a negotiated project and a team approach where you're using information repetitively through a cycle, or on a, a competitive project where uh, you want to get as much information to the bidders in a shorter period of time as possible. So that's, that's what this integration is about. So let me tell you a little bit about I-square-foot. Um, we're a web-based um, solution geared for general contractors, primarily in the pre-construction uh, bid management stages. Document distribution and, and communication management is, is key. We also have a, a host of pre-qualification and risk assessment tools. They're also web-based. Uh, and We have a large network of subcontractors, manufacturers, suppliers uh, that are all on the web for uh, working in commercial construction. So uh, we're really excited to work with Assemble in this integration. It's, it's really a, a, good, um, a good tool that now enables GCs to, to bring that information that, that Tim uh, is describing that, that Assemble does into the pre-construction side of things uh, to give more insight into, uh, into the project. Raul, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, Robbins and Morton because you guys are the spotlight here today. Great, I appreciate it. Uh, so a little bit about us. We're a 70 year old company. Uh, we are privately owned, same ownership. We have uh, adapted a, a process internally as a company that allows us to really move forward from a continuous improvement perspective and adapting new methods and new technologies. And, and part of that is what we're here to talk about today. Um, we are a national healthcare uh, contractor. Uh, we've worked in um, 35 states, mostly large replacement hospitals. Uh, we've worked on more than 1,500 healthcare projects and have worked in uh, 35 states. We're primarily located, and our offices are located in the southeast uh, part of the country, but it's never prevented us from really moving around anywhere in the country. Um, uh, we have been top, uh, top general contractors several times. Uh, we rank about 88 uh, on the ENR um, general contract report. So. Proud to be part of this company. This is a great company uh, to, to be with, um, always looking ahead and looking forward, um, all in the interest of our owners, uh, bringing them added value and uh, high quality construction. <clears throat> I would like to highlight here a sec for uh, three projects uh, that I think that we have uh, we've provided uh, a very high level of su success for our owners. Uh, one project, uh, Maine General, out of Maine, has been really a uh, was really a test bed for us as it relates to uh, process and technology. Uh, we worked under a true uh, tri-party agreement uh, in an IPD uh, integrated project delivery uh, fashion. Um, really allowed us to integrate and really incubate technology and really test it, um, which really I think is one of the best contracts to to be in. Uh, and delivering a, a high, high uh, quality product um, in, in that particular case on May General, allowing us to use uh, lean methods and uh, BIM and, and BDC processes and really removing the liabilities uh, between architect, engineer, owner, subcontractor has really helped us quite a bit in building trust and working together. So we really uh, delivered a 36 month project in in 25 months, which is really uh, almost unheard of. So we, uh, we're excited about having uh, participated in that one. Uh, the other two below, um, Baylor Scott, uh, White, uh, White Medical Center, also a great project that was a design assist. Uh, that's not as open as an IPD, but close enough. It allows us to really uh, collaborate early on with architects and engineers and bring the subcontractors on board early. Uh, and Baptist Memorial, which is currently uh, underway, 
uh, and in progress also is turning out to be a wonderful project as it relates to integrating technology, getting the subs to participate, uh, getting the architects engaged, getting the owners engaged uh, has really turned out to be a success as well uh, thus far on this project. So we're really happy to have these types of projects to really be able to test out uh, items like today um, in, in moving forward with uh, bringing assemble into the fold and I square foot in the fold as to what we're doing. Tim, if you don't mind going to the next slide, I'd, um, I'd like to talk a little bit just overall about how we utilize technology from the beginning and uh, just sort of how uh, assemble and I square foot fit into that. So really what we're doing is expanding uh, what, what was started um, and what I was a part of a beta test in 2000, which was Revit, um, expanding that and really taking it forward and bringing it now to 2016 as to how we're now utilizing the data that architects and engineers are using to model. Um, and really what's important for us is really uh, the 3D model um, and the uh, metadata or construction data that's really associated with that model. Um, we, we receive the model in pre-construction and estimating. We go through an inter interrogation process um, that allows us to vet the model, uh, how accurate it is, and uh, if there's any conditioning that we, have, that we need to do based on, on what we receive by the architect and engineer. Um, and that's really part of what we're talking about today is the expansion of that process of uh, using Assemble and I square foot. We use Assemble obviously um, because uh, uh, it's very difficult to have um, people that aren't necessarily Revit users to, to utilize that as a tool. So Assemble has made it easy to get to that data and use it uh, as an estimator. Um, obviously model coordination, that's, that's the heart and soul of what we do. Um, we definitely vet the design uh, with the model and uh, utilizing the data as well. Um, HD scans complements what we do with our BIM models and how we use them. Uh, merging with a design model and going in and scanning an existing condition, that's something we do uh, quite a bit of and that's really proven to be a useful step. Uh, 4D scheduling, as you see here, uh, that's something that we do as well. We want to show the owners exactly how their building is going to come together on any given project and the accuracy of the model is, is important. Uh, virtual mock-ups, very new as well. We, we love that process, getting the owner involved and showing them what their building is going to look like, showing them what their are, ORs and their hospital rooms are going to look like. Uh, also, that's something we do as well. And robotic layout, um, after we coordinate uh, models, why not use the, the points that we uh, have identified in the, uh, the model uh, for layout and uh, using robotic layout. So that's also proven to be a success. It's probably exceeded our layout abilities by 50% improvement. So, and mobile technology, last but not least, that is going to really uh, impact, and it has impacted, how we actually get uh, BIM data, BIM information, anything related to the building itself, to the field. Uh, we are now currently a Procore user uh, as a company, and uh, we have worked with them to, to get uh, data streaming within uh, Procore as well to be able to utilize those data downstream at our construction sites, uh, along superintendents, assist, assistant superintendents, project managers, to access the data from the field. So this is uh, all all in one and part of what we're talking about here today with the symbol and I square foot, I believe is just really expanding uh, the process and how we're actually utilizing uh, VDC and, and BIM data uh, within our process. So uh, I see it evolving. Um, I don't see us going back doing it the old way. Uh, this is really uh, going to be sort of the new way uh, for us and, and uh, the people that work with us, uh, superintendents, uh, I'm sorry, subcontractors and vendors and owners. So uh, that's my um, uh, sharing of what we do as a company. Well, that's great. Thanks for sharing. It's, it sounds like Robbins and Morton is really um, on the front side of, of a lot of adapting some of these, these technologies and getting that information out in front of uh, owners as, and subs as well. Um, our next poll here, we'd really just like to ask the group, you know, uh, since we're talking about sharing models uh, with bidders and so forth, how, how many of you are actually sharing models today and to what extent, um, whether you're share, sharing them completely with, with all your bidders or is it a select group, etc.? cetera? Give, give everybody a second to, uh, to respond here.
looks like it's really trending towards most folks don't share models. Um, we do uh, do see a, a significant number in our uh, in, in answer B there where, where folks are sharing models with select trades uh, during the bid phase. Uh, that's probably pretty consistent with uh, with what we've what we've learned from other GCs uh, so far. So let's talk a little bit about what uh, what we're here to here to discuss today, right? The the integration uh, between the assemble platform uh, with I square foot in uh, pre bid in bid management. Um, basically, it's a, at a high level. You know, the GCs are, are able to select specific pieces uh, of the model and assemble, share those out uh, through I square foot as a specific view, and then any of the subcontractors that are invited to that I square foot project can come in and access that model right next to that traditional uh, 2D. Uh, and drawings and specifications. Uh, so let's let's talk a little bit about how Robinson Morton has has taken this this tool and then applied it to their their process. Blake, you want to give us a little? Yep. Uh, Absolutely. And, I, and I'm a, I'm going to hijack the screen here and, uh, and and put it on my computer. So. <clears throat> And if you guys would give me a second to do that. So what we've been able to do, um, or, or what uh, Assemble and I Square Foot um, with this uh, <clears throat> team effort have been able to do, um, we here at Robbins and Morton have uh, long before um, I was aware um, that this was going to be a plug-in to I Square Foot, we've been uh, utilizing sharing these the information from the model with subcontractors and, and what that process looked like a few years ago really when we started adopting this as I would for particular scopes of work uh, <clears throat> and and because of the type of work that we do here at Robbins and Morton most of it being negotiated work being our, our bread and butter um, we are budgeting projects a lot of times multiple times and uh, a lot of these subcontractors that we talk to are you know, these are good, qualified subcontractors that, that we trust, um, but a lot of these guys, they're, they're chasing real work, and a lot of times they don't don't have the time to f go into these jobs and to, to really take them off and put in the, the effort to give us an accurate budget for the project. They have no problem giving us budget numbers, this, that, and the other, that whole nine yards, but, but what uh, I was able to do um, when I really first started using, and, and this is the starting point uh, of it all, but, but where this started was um, in a symbol, interrogating models, uh, I found that if I had done my due diligence, done my takeoff, um, and I had <clears throat> isolated certain objects in the 3D model, and I was able to highlight a, a specific subcontractor scope of work along with the quantities um, and share that information with him, now when I'm calling these people, um, getting budgetary numbers, instead of you know the, the guys that were too busy to budget, you know, now I'm getting accurate, realistic numbers from them. So maybe there are these cases where, where we were only getting one or two numbers, and, and now I can get uh, three, four, maybe sometimes uh, five subcontractors to, to accurately price the work. They can, can more quickly look at the project, see their scope of work, and was getting pricing that way. And what that process looked like is I was literally taking screenshots and, and shooting emails to these guys and, and calling them up, and, and we would talk about it. And usually by the end of the day, I would have a much more more accurate budgetary price than, hey, plug $17 a square foot. Well, sometimes $17 a square foot doesn't work when we're talking about a masonry wall that's 127 feet in the air. But with a symbol, and a, you know, very quickly these guys can see their scope of work, see that the, it's going to require high strength grout and bracing and this, that, and the other, and, and uh, it gives them a more accurate view much quicker of, of what's going on, especially in that budgetary phase. So what I square foot and the symbol have been able to do is now I can come in here and I can, can save a particular view and I've already done this process for time's sake and so <clears throat> once I save a particular view let's say I want to isolate a certain element such as the, the masonry scope or excuse me isolate a certain scope of work so let's say I come in here um, in the actual model itself this is an, uh, a model that we got straight from the straight from the architect pumped it into a symbol and we're able to verify the quantities and um, I isolated the masonry package. I saved this view. Um, there's a plugin that you can download from assemble.com that you that you have to have to get you <clears throat> the availability to share models on I square foot. But once you save that particular view, you'll come up here. Um, you'll save your view. Um, and once you do that, you have the option to share a view. 
Okay, and once you have done that, it is the same exact process um, as downloading or uploading drawings, uploading specs, or addenda documents, whatever that may be. It's as simple as you guys coming in here and, and right clicking, adding a model view, and uh, once you do that, you know, you've, I've got, you can see some of the model views that, that I've added right here, and then essentially this is what the subcontractors get. Um, this is an example of I've got all the cast stone, all the brick on the exterior face of the building, along with the quantities. Um, <clears throat> And and so so with this, I mean, you you guys can see that you know this is a lot more than a an email that says there's twelve thousand square feet of brick on the exterior of the building. Now they can can see it, and and I'm able to in real time when I've got them on the phone. I'm, I'm talking to these subcontractors. Can say, hey, um, you know, go to the drawings tab, or, or go to your excuse me, go to your documents tab, which is and the subcontractors are familiar with this. This is where they go to download their drawings, their specs. And in the same place, now they have access to the models that I've already set up. And, and the process as a whole is um, Assemble and I Square Foot have done a very good job of making it very user friendly. That's awesome, Blake. And I'm going to go ahead and steal the screen back from you um, and kind of continue here. But um, you, you talked a minute about um, initially before this integration, you were already digging into the models, digging in through Symbol, isolating scopes, and creating screenshots. And then, and I think uh, going through that demonstration and showing now where they can actually navigate the model, um, tell us a little bit more about um, a, as that's happened and as these subcontractors are getting to that model, what's it doing for you guys as a general contractor? Um, really, the idea and, and what I'm asking is um, if we look back at our the, the poll two question that we had, uh, we're looking at when you're giving subcontractors information during the bidding phase. And we had quite a few respond um, that they are doing that during bid phase, and then quite a few that they aren't uh, sharing at all uh, with bidders. Um, so why don't you talk a little bit about like what that does for the relationship between you and your subcontractors that you're doing this with? Um, absolutely. Um, this is, I mean, this is strengthening um, the relationship with these guys. I mean, we're being very transparent with them, and and they know that um, we're upfront with these guys and. Um, you know, being able to, to do your due diligence and, and let them know that, that you know how much you value, um, uh, how much you value their input, how much you value um, that number that they have really goes a long way um, when they see that you've gone the distance to get them everything they need, um, so that you can make sure that you know you're ultimately providing the owner a better product in the end by getting them good qualified subs. And um, a lot of times where this is the case, you know, we find that since we get these guys involved early, get them excited early. Um, instead of maybe getting the B and C team out there to perform the job when it actually happens, um, you know now we've got the we've got the A team because they've they've been aware of the project, the technicality of it, and um, it really does go a long way. Raul, do you have anything you'd like to add to that? No, you were spot on, Blake. Um, I think you hit a lot of the points. One of the one of the key items is they appreciate the fact that we engage them and we involve them in, in sharing this information. So. Uh, just adding to what you mentioned, uh, I think that's uh, been been something that uh, a lot of subcontractors realize uh, where the industry is going, and uh, and they want to be a part of it. So we make them a part of it. They'll be happy to engage uh, with us um, throughout the process of uh, sharing this information with them. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we all know uh, from the contractor community that participation is you know. Um, uh, having coverage is key. You've got to have uh, the right amount of coverage to do well, like, like Blake said, for the owner. Um, and, and Blake, you talked a bit about um, some of the benefits from the subcontractor point of view, but I know overall you guys reached out after going through this process to all the subcontractors that participated. So why don't you share a little bit more about, um, from uh, the subcontractor point of view, what you guys were able to hear. Um, absolutely, and and how these conversations look for the subcontractors. I mean, it was you, I could do it in real time on being able to say, you know, because I've done the legwork, um, being able to in in real time say, hey man, you know, go to the go to your documents tab, just take a look at this, and they'd pull up, for example, that that actual masonry. Uh, 
<clears throat> model view where I had conditioned that particular model to show only his scope of work and, and it was right there and um, when he can drive from that point I mean it's just you know that the eyes widen and you know then they start asking questions and then they you know they see the the value in it immediately and they they, they want to learn more and it's a, it's a very unique process very positive feedback overall yeah absolutely and then Raul, just to fill it, you know, from a higher level, I think some of the benefit here that you guys shared with us was uh, really about, um, uh, you, you talked a bit about how, how proud you are of being a part of Robbins and Morton and having kind of a good name out in front of the industry. And I, I think um, uh, part, of, part of this and being open and, and upfront early with the contractors, giving them as much information as possible. Uh, you guys have seen some benefits just at a you know a marketability standpoint of Robinson Morton. Do you have any anything to share on that? Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, there's a bit of passion in me as it relates to where we all started in, in Revit, and, and I'm, I I predate myself too because I've been dealing with 3D integration going back to Intergraph, but we don't that much uh, today. Um, but everything from Revit forward, I think, has been really interesting in seeing how it's evolved. And, um, and we are at a point right now where I, I almost think we're a year or two away to really breaking open how we utilize uh, the building information and how we utilize it throughout our process as general contractors. So <clears throat> my, my role has been at a higher level trying to bring these types of tools, which we've been working with USAML uh, directly for the past three years and I think with the I square foot probably the past 15 to 20 years. So these are tools that we've already used and the flow for us in integrating uh, Assemble has been really um, almost uh, pretty simple and straightforward as it's really matched our workflow uh, pretty well uh, going from OST which is a tool that we still use uh, but there's no doubt that Assemble is sort of the, the future uh, technology that we're going to be moving into more and more. But really it's, it's expanding uh, how we're utilizing the, the information from the Revit model and uh, the, we wouldn't be having this conversation if, if Assemble didn't really uh, go out of their way to realize um, let's bring a tool um, to the masses that are non-Revit users um, and that's been really key here. Um, you know, and we're just talking about the estimating piece, but as we move forward, I can envision um, utilizing the model to uh, do uh, a, a projection on where we're at currently for a project and how we can feedback that into Assemble as to progress uh, work to date. Um, you know, we could do earned value assessment based on where we're at on, on any particular project. So. That to me is sort of down the road and I really see it evolving um, further into other systems that are related to what we do. Um, so uh, those are yet to come of course, but um, I do like the direction and the feedback that we're getting with our partners, um, them being architects and engineers um, and, and really having them understand why it is we need accurate models, why it is that we need them to be part of the process. That's really what, what our goal and, and the difference that we're trying to make uh, to our owners and, and to industry. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's fantastic. And um, part of that evolution you're talking about there always comes a learning curve. Um, and with any new uh, process, any new software, it, it can be um, you know, obviously the, the hurdle up front is getting over a learning curve and getting it out in front of the industry. So um, part of this process for you guys, Blake, and I know you, you kind of drove this pro uh, project here that we're looking at, um, can you explain a little bit about uh, the learning curve that you had and the subcontractors had and in getting into these model views uh, as they're downloading and looking at the, the project documents? Absolutely, um, and and yeah, with anything, you know, just echoing that, that there's definitely the learning curve, and the second that you mention 3D modeling, you know, that a lot of the times your your answer, especially in the subcontractor world, is very standoffish. Um, but the great part about a symbol, um, and especially this plugin, is is as a GC or from from what I do here each and every day, someone who does understand a symbol, who does understand how to condition a model, um, and two, I have to do my due diligence in 
in making sure that, you know, and ask myself before I publish a specific model or specific model view, whatever I'm sharing, that I've done my due diligence in making, you know, someone who may not be as, as tech savvy or who, who can't drive or who may has never seen anything like this before, that I've done I've done a lot of the legwork. So the majority is there and they can see it. Um, and, and I think that especially with, with this uh, uh, effort here to team up with iSquareFoot, with these guys being able to access this model with a way that they're comfortable. They do it with drawings and specs, and I've, I've already said this, but, but this is something that they do on a daily basis um, with other jobs, and, and this is just another element to that. And they're, they're comfortable getting there, and a lot of these guys, it's, you know, it can't just be you, you throw them in there and say, hey, look at the model, use it. Uh, if, you know, if that's your mentality, then you know, you're, you're, you're not going to get positive feedback, the subcontractors aren't going to be able to just go in there and drive, but um, if you've done your due diligence and you've, you've given these guys some, some useful stuff, it's, it's very easy to get on the phone and, and start walking through it with them, um, and very quickly they'll, they'll want to learn more, they'll have that, that hunger. And um, Tim, if, if you would uh, switch over to that next slide, I know that we've touched on you know, a lot of these points, these subcontractors are seeing, they're definitely seeing the value in this, um, but, but skipping down to that, that last point, um, standards is huge, um, and a lot of that comes with, with what I started out talking with, is, is we as the general contractor or, or whoever is posting these model views, giving these guys um, the opportunity to utilize this and what they're doing in their pre-construction process. We have to do our due diligence to make sure that what we've given them, the information is useful, and it's from a point, you know, where they can take baby steps, and they, they, can, they can start to use it. Maybe, you know, the, the starting point is using it as a visualization tool and a quantity check, but it's so much more than that when you have a essentially a building there with the data in it. And, um, so, so it was very positive on that end. That's great to hear, Blake. Um, you know, you, we've, we've gone over many of these points um, through, throughout the, the conversation today. You know, subs getting in and, and using it and getting to the point where they're ready to hunger, right? Um, there's, there's a level of, uh, of detail now that um, makes those estimations, those takeoffs easier. So now the subs and, and the GCs for that matter are spending a little less time doing uh, the rigors of takeoff and pricing out quantities and so forth and spending a lot more time in that constructability uh, and getting into you know the challenges that, that you're going to run into building that project. Um, so getting into that, you know, uh, I think trust is the key. Once, once everybody's relying on this information, it'll, it'll even be faster and more efficient. Um, Raul, would you would you take a second and and talk a little bit more? You're you're really kind of the visionary here, and you've touched on a few things already. But how how is this going to help uh, lead the charge in changing our industry? So I think that first point uh, really I couldn't be more significant to really uh, drive the point of 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 what the model really entails. One of the first things that that are typically that we were typically challenged with um, was you know how can we trust the model uh, how can we trust the information that's there um, and really um, it's it's the same information that we're looking at on our 2D uh, prints um, it's no different it's being generated from the model uh, to 2D so really the information is the same and uh, Having everybody understand that, uh, I think it tend to ease uh, their their comfort level. And then, and then the other key was, how can we then get them engaged with a three D model? And that's where really, really assemble came in, came in. And then seeing the the uh, low hanging fruit as it relates to the metadata, the building data that's built in to Revit, knowing what kind of wall, doors, windows, glass, concrete, steel we're dealing with and all that information is already coming out of Revit already. Um, so you're getting that information uh, right off the bat um, and, 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 and the trust factor really is you know building up confidence as well and talking to the architects saying look here's what we're doing with the models that you give us here's why it's important not to use generic terms um, with your families. We want to know what it is that you're modeling. We really want to utilize that so um, we, can, we can get to a point, hopefully, somewhere in the near future where we no longer have to uh, doubt what we're getting. Uh, we'll have true confidence in, 
and the information that we're getting. There are partners that we work with directly where we have shown them the process of model interrogation. Um, at first, there's a shock and awe with some of the architects, but then they realize, wow, this is a really great tool. Um, some have gone as far as using Assemble as a quality checker for them and, and making sure that they're delivering good models to us and good information to us. So it's really moving in the right direction um, for us and, and being able to now use the model, get that information pretty much in real time if we're working with architects, which we do, where we get weekly updates. We're getting updates all the time of what's being added, what's being omitted. Um, you know, we're comparing uh, uh, the sets uh, within Assemble. So there's a lot of uh, different steps that we have taken, at least from a training perspective, um, to get the trust built in, at least to our team internally, which I think we're at a point right now where it's really uh, uh, expanding um, and, and using the tool as, as part of our tool set. So, uh, and now with our square foot, I think this is going to now br bring it over to the subcontractors, again, allowing them to engage. Um, you know, we're, we're in, a, in an industry where it's, it's evolving continuously, and again, I'm sorry to repeat this again, but, you know, going back uh, to 2016, I felt strongly about where we were going, uh, both in the A&E side plus in the uh, general contractor side, and I'm still excited to, to how we're going to bleed into uh, with the owner side. We have delivered some facility management solutions to them related to the models that we build. Uh, for, for building management. So that's something that we're still tapping into and, and moving into. But going back to the architects, um, I do know that as an industry, they're wanting to uh, be engaged um, as well. They've realized that the general contractors have really carried the ball forward in a very big way. And uh, they want to also uh, be participants in this process and have also um, requested, at least for me, being a part of a, a council that represent architects is to design futures council and trying to show them what we're doing and how we're doing it and how they can engage and try to align themselves to provide us uh, models that are that are of a higher quality and 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 being able to work with us uh, directly is is more of a partner and not just throwing the 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 models and the and the and the drawings over the wall and 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 sort of not participating. We want them to participate. So. Um, things like that, I think, are really going to help us. I think it's going to be a totally different uh, uh, picture in five to ten years in terms of how we're operating with them and even how we're using and expanding uh, building information and VDC processes that are all associated from the BIM model, how we're using it and expanding it as a company. So my goal is to really, uh, really push that forward and, 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 as we said earlier, the end goal for us is to provide a, a higher quality product to our owners and, and, and really add value to what we're delivering uh, to them as well. So that's really the, the bottom line and our subcontractors and the barriers that we have in front of us. Um, and really the, the barriers truly are, are fairly simple. It's, it's really how we used to do things versus how can we do things better. And, and it's really a matter of how we bring people along and how we really champion that change and how we really um, provide that opportunity through continuous improvement, really, which is really a uh, key to what we've been doing and allowing everybody the opportunity to, to see different ways. So I think as an industry, if everyone does that, I think uh, it'll be a, a, a much better and, and fruitful industry as we, as we move forward. So uh, that's really my, my two cents there. Oh, awesome. And, and Raul, that's, that's great. So first, I want to give a huge thank you to Robbins and Morton, Raul and Blake, uh, for taking the time today uh, to share their experience in this process and, and what they're looking forward to as we, as we move through this and, and move the industry further into the future. Um, now, though, we're actually going to move into the Q&A portion. And I see that we already have a, a number of questions coming in. But if you guys have specific questions that you'd like to ask Tom, myself, Raul, or Blake, uh, feel free to direct them uh, to those individuals, and we'll, we'll go ahead and move from here into uh, Samira uh, fielding some of those questions we have coming in now. Thanks, Tim. What a great session. We have had quite a few questions come in, so we'll try to do our best to get through them today. Uh, this first question is for the Robinson Morton team. Uh, we as a GC don't see a lot of models yet. 
how have you managed to overcome resistance from the architect uh, to share the model? Um, yeah, I'd like to. This is Blake Sayers. I'd like to field this one. Um, and obviously, that's that's one of the barriers that we run into each and every day. Um, I think ultimately, the best answer to that is is really having that conversation with your architect and and um, the team, and you know, really letting these guys know what value it's going to bring, what what benefit they're going to get, um, how you're going to use it, um, that you're not crumpling away, because it's easy to say that all a symbol is good for or 3D modeling is good for in the eyes of the estimator is so that he can be lazy and not have to do his quantity takeoff. Well, well, that's not the case. Um, you know, if we can, you know, express to these guys, hey, um, this is going to help us bring more value to your job by getting you more coverage, by back checking our 2D takeoffs, by back checking the subcontractor's 2D takeoffs, usually that conversation um, is a little easier to have, and uh, you know, a lot of times they, they there's an AIA document out there that we still sign on a regular basis. But um, when you have that conversation, and when you express the value that the team as a whole is going to receive from it, a lot of times you know that resistance you end up getting the model. Yeah, if I can add to that as well, um, that's a great response. You know, Robinson Morton has always made it a point to really partner up with architects. Uh, we pro we've provided training in the past in bringing architects in into our training center and actually sitting down and showing them how to use Revit. And the reason why we're doing that because, you know, we consider them as partners and we really want them to engage with us. So we continually partner with architects and train them at our cost, at our expense, uh, to really get them engaged. We have seen a big improvement uh, uh, the past two or three years, uh, our more architects making Revit their standard uh, in terms of drawing and delivering models. Uh, the challenge that we still have as an industry, however, is that you know uh, some architects still model in 3D, which is great, but they they only model to 2D output, which really we're trying to really work through that. But most architects then realizing how we use it, having them realize how we use it, I think. Uh, they're very willing to, to, to actually change. And as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, I'm involved with some industry changes along with, the, like, like I mentioned, the Design Futures Council and, and, and going around to architects, um, which they represent about a very large portion of the AIA chapters that are out there and trying to get them to, to see, because um, many architects don't even know how we're using their models. So um, it, the more they can understand, uh, the more the they'll put the, the pieces together as to what the long-term vision is and, and being able to utilize uh, their models. Thanks, Raul. And if anyone would like additional information about the design console that Raul mentioned, just reach out to us and we will get you in touch with Raul. And now, follow-up question for you, Raul. Um, are you seeing models on every project? No, unfortunately, uh, no, we're not seeing it on every project. Um, but however, <clears throat> Blake and, and, and the estimating team um, uh, have now really made it one of the first questions they ask when we receive projects. Um, so we are now at least, when we receive drawings, uh, we are immediately asking for the models. We have, uh, with some architects, automatically have received the models for us to use without even asking for them, which is great. Um, however, uh, we are not there 100%. One of the challenges that I, I do have understanding, and, and I'm a little biased here because I'm, I'm a big technology guy here, uh, is that architects uh, not using Revit is, is difficult to understand, especially because Revit was introduced back in 2000 and in 2001 at Revit 1L uh, to architects. So for someone to still uh, be on AutoCAD or, or still doing uh, 2D uh, drawings, it's hard to understand, uh, but not, you know I need to put myself in their position too as to why that might be. But really, um, back in 2001, 2002, we were already seeing a savings in how uh, how to how to use Revit in design practice, and the savings was 30 to 50 percent at that point uh, at a DD level. So, for not using that, I just don't understand um, why that is not, and maybe it's just people don't understand what Revit can do you know, uh, as, a, as an architect. Um, but uh, I think it's getting better, and I think as we move forward in, in three years, four years, five years, uh, we may see uh, models on all of our projects, uh, irregardless of, of size. 
uh, we tend to also say, well, you know, if it's this, if it's a small little, you know, commercial building, it's not worth it. Well, that's still not true because the parametric uh, value of, of Revit and, and being able to uh, build a model and then create sections and elevations and perspectives, all that on the fly, that's pretty powerful. Perfect. Thank you. Now, this is for you, Blake. Is Robbins and Morton doing all y'all's uh, takeoff through 3D modeling? No, no, we are not. Um, we do. It's. I mean, it's very trade specific, and um, we are not. No, to answer that, um, I utilize it um, as as often as I can, but it's it's not practical for for necessarily all takeoff. Um, where it is, if it's you know structurally skin, um, a lot of times our masonry packages, things of that sort, it's it's very useful. But when it comes to, to blocking and sometimes um, count items, things that require the human element, there's still a portion of, of what on, on every project I do, there's still a portion of it that I'm doing in 2D as well as 3D. But the two uh, work great in conjunction together and it and it really goes a long way when I can um, especially Going back to the earlier stages uh, before the integration, um, when I was sending these guys emails, a lot of time when I would send them screenshots, you know, they would go, "Well, what the heck is this? I don't trust this." Well, when I would shoot them a screenshot of a 2D takeoff and on-screen takeoff that was within five percent, um, you know, they started to to see the the accuracy. Great. I do want to just one point to that, Samira. Um, I do, you know, there's a myth about, well, you know, we use assemble, then, you know, let's just hit the easy button and out comes our, our estimate. That's not the way it works. Um, we still, there's still a human factor here that is going to take place and it will be that way all the time. Um, we have to have estimators to check what is coming out of the models to, to make sure that it's accurate. We have to, we have to do that. That's not going to go away. Um, what it is helping is it's helping take care of the, the, the low the low hanging fruit as it relates to what we can get out of the model quickly and allowing estimators to focus on really the important things on a project. So, right and and Raul, a, a great example of that is is you know as we're a lot of these jobs we're continuously pricing things and say we've got a 2,000 ton steel job um, and we've you know and we're getting updated structural models it's very easy for me to keep tabs on what has changed and then when I'm in that model and I see that you know now hey we got a 200 ton fluctuation or you know a 500 ton fluctuation then very quickly I, I can check that. So it's a, it's a tool set in our drawer. Um, I think OST is still going to be uh, an important part of the process. But uh, you know, if we look at this as a, an added tool, it's a, it's a tool that undoubtedly is going to provide benefit. But uh, that's really what it is. So. Okay. So um, we do have quite a few questions come in, so I want to make sure we try to get to as many as possible. What kind of disclaimer do you use when sharing these models with the subs? Well, I think there's not necessarily a disclaimer that we use. It's um, it's more so it all goes back to us doing our due diligence. Um, you, we're not contractually on any of our uh, projects bound to a um, you know bound to a particular model. It all goes back to you know the low hanging fruit that Raul's talking about that you can utilize. There, there's still a human factor. Um, you know these subcontractors as well. They have to do their part in making sure they've checked the notes and, and it, it's a tool that we're now putting in their toolbox to use in conjunction with the other processes that they're already using. Great. Now if you guys can briefly touch on uh, what's your process for validating the models as accurate to the plans and your mm -hmm. AE team isn't using 2D line work inside a 3D program? Um, that, the way that process looks for me, the particular example that I was able to use on um, that, you, that you guys saw a few slides ago when I had the, my monitor showing on that particular project, um, what that looked like for me as far as grabbing the square footage of a brick um, was I literally got an on screen, or I didn't even get an on screen. I have my I have a calculator that sits right in front of me, and on my calculator, if I see that the building's 100 foot tall by 100 foot wide, and I figure out how many square feet I have, I can very easily select those elements, and then if they match up, then um, that right there is a very quick way to tell, um, as well as, and I, and I personally as an estimator like to get in the nuts and bolts and dive into a job, so if it's a, got a 
pretty complicated concrete package just so that I can grasp my head around what's going on. I like to maybe take off a, a specific portion of the work, uh, maybe a, maybe one or two phases, and then back check that and see what the symbol's spitting out. And I, more often than not, they're they're right on top of each other. And, and after I've done that, um, I, I and feel comfortable, then then that's usually my process of, of validating. If I could add to that. Um, <clears throat> So, you know, one of the things that, that we're trying to focus on, too, with the Design Futures Council is, is modeling uh, best practices. I think we do realize that, that there are ways to, to uh, circumvent the true parametrics in Revit, um, and that's by doing line work. And line work really is uh, non-intelligent data uh, that won't come through. So um, if, if I were working in a design firm, uh, uh, I would be telling everybody not to be doing that. Uh, I understand line work, uh, it, you know, has to be used in details and sections and things like that, but that's not where we're getting most of our data from. We're getting it from the parametric model. So um, modeling best practices is something that I think some architects do practice, but I, I do know that some architects uh, don't yet. So um, I think really that's a, an evolution um, where I think architects will get better and better and how they model um, as that piece of Revit uh, industry uh, change is going on in the a and &E, uh, space. Great. Now, um, are you guys involving the subs in the interrogation process at all, especially the subs in charge of the biggest scope of work, like electrical? Yeah, I think this is an example. I mean, what we showed today is an example of what we, we will do. Uh, with any information that we do receive with any sub. So in this case, we showed what we did with the, uh, the brick su uh, uh, supplier and, and the brick um, subcontractor. Um, if we had the same thing with electrical, um, with mechanical, we would go through that same process in, in what we presented today with them. Uh, so that's really uh, for any sub. We just happen to use this example for today's meeting. Um, but we would see ourselves uh, really utilizing that with all subcontractors. Now, this is an interesting question. Um, one of our attendees is asking, they are new graduate that has a strong background in Revit and architecture. Um, it says, I have taken a job at a GC where Revit has not been implemented in the office on the pre-con side of things. What will you suggest as a first step for moving my office forward to using this technology? Thank you. Yeah, Revit, Revit is, is an authoring tool, and it, you know, anyone who on this call who has taken Revit or knows Revit understands that it's not the easiest tool to really learn and understand, especially if you're a general contractor. Um, it's really, you know, uh, it's, it's a really uh, big step to try to really immerse yourself into an authoring tool that architects use for design and, and, and drawing development. Um, what assemble? What I would encourage is really trying to have uh, someone um, really implement assemble to at least get to the information um, and not worry about going into Revit and scheduling it out. Really, which is the old way. Yeah. Just really going in and really seeing what you have, and if you can at least out of the assemble model get fifty percent of what you need. Well, that's fifty percent of information that you would have to have searched for in a Revit model. So um, that to me is a huge plus. I mean, yeah, it's not 100%. Okay, it's 50%. Then let's figure out how we um, estimate the other pieces that are missing. And that may default to uh, traditional methods. So um, I would encourage at least to start with assemble. Uh, we, we did try uh, seven, eight years ago internally here at Robbins & Morton to try to get uh, estimators to use Revit, and it's it's been challenging. Um, a lot of uh, it's just a very difficult program to learn, and it's really hard for an estimator to really understand and learn it. Now, you mentioned the graduate was fairly young. Um, that may be a little different story because we know our younger generation uh, they live and breathe uh, technology. Awesome. Mm -hmm. oh. Next question, do you share the I-square-foot model view with all your subs or just selected subs that are willing to be more competitive? Also, are yeah. you sharing the model views or the model views and inventory as well? 
And that's that's job specific, and that's and that's the unique part. Of this is very easy to set up um, condition wise. Um, I Square Foot has done a great job of of being able to grant permissions, and that's all preference. Um, that, that is all personal preference. I personally, um, I go ahead and give it to all the subcontractors because um, a lot of guys, you know, your Division Ten, your specialty guys, they may not. You know, they may not even look at it, and um, I personally don't have any hesitation on, on sharing it with those guys. But if, if that is what you prefer, um, or if you prefer only giving them the capabilities to just use the model as a visualization tool, you can condition that and highlight their specific scope. But say you don't trust the quantities, um, you have the option to do that as well. So as far as the permissions go um, with this integration, I'd say that it, it's it's very you are very much in control of the information that's received. We are almost out of time and we have had quite a few questions come in. If we did not get a chance to answer your question, we will reach out to you after the webinar and make sure that we address all your questions and concerns. Uh, any closing thoughts that you guys would like to add? No, I just, um, this is this is Blake Sayers, and I just uh, I'm really excited about this. This is really has um, been a very big part of what I do. Um, the more time that I spend with a symbol, and the, the better I each and every day I might uh, learn something new. The, the better, the more time that I've I've spent with a symbol um, and interrogating models and, and really learning how to manage that data, the more accurate and the more uh, the more I find use for it. it. It truly has become an integral process um, to what I do each and every day and I'm really excited about being able to share this information with the subcontractor world. And it, uh, just to, to, just to, to my point, um, you know, I really am glad to, to work with people like Blake and, and other people that have really championed this. Um, you know, I, I by no means am an expert in everything related to construction. Uh, so I depend on people like Blake to be able to really pick up the ball and test this and use this and, and then realize that uh, this is a great tool to use. So uh, as a company, um, as Robbins & Morton, uh, we definitely are allowed the opportunity to uh, look at new technology and figure out where there's a fit and really bring it forward and build it into our process. So I, number one, am, am, am happy for that opportunity in working with our leadership here at Robbins and & Morton and, um, and being able to, to do that and being able to vet the correct software to use and test. Uh, so far, you know, I've, it's been pretty, pretty exciting to, to be a part of this and also be a part of things that are upcoming um, that are really haven't been discussed here. But um, to sort of uh, be part of that, that change in industry is really great to see. But, uh, and, and the last part is, you know, Robbins & Morton is, is a leader at what, what we do. I mean, we're, we're very good at building healthcare, care. And um, I, I would say um, that a lot of it has to do with our ability to help integrate technology. Um, so um, we all move in, 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 in that fashion together um, to really do the best we can uh, in healthcare. care. Uh, and, and commercial, and, and, and the team, I'll compliment the team that, that I have at Robbins & Morton um, uh, in Florida, and uh, uh, that we did, you know, Don and Charlotte, and Hannah, and, and Huntsville, and, and others that really are helping contribute and push uh, this dynamic together as a company. So it's great to be a part of it, and uh, I look forward to uh, things advancing in the future and having more of these um, webinars. Thank you so much for joining us and being our guest today. We really do appreciate it. Tom, anything you would like to add? I don't can say anything better than what Raul has put forth today. It's, uh, it's exciting times in the construction industry, and uh, seeing you guys be able to take the, the idea child of, of I square foot and assemble from an integration and move it forward is really uh, special to see firsthand. So thank you so much for, for being our guest today. Uh, hopefully the, uh, the attendees got a lot out of it and uh, we have a lot of questions that we didn't get to so we'll be following up with that. So really really thank you Raul and, and Blake for coming out today. Thank you for the opportunity. Tim, any closing thoughts from you? Uh, Tom and, and Raul summed it up well and Blake, um, 
I'll just add thank you to the attendees for spending now um, over an hour with us today. So I really appreciate that. Perfect. Uh, exactly. Neon, thank you so much for attending today. As Tom mentioned, if we did not get to your question, we will reach out to you after the webinar. I know you guys had a lot of questions for the Robbins and Morton team as well. So I will make sure that those questions are sent over to Raul and Blake. Uh, thanks again, and we will make sure that you guys get a recording um, by end of day tomorrow.